God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Your lamp of virtue, love, and prayer, O virgin pleasing to the King, as one you favor in his sight, whose glory all the angels sing, as chosen bright of spouse divine, the saints rejoice your face to see. His love has kept you for his own, by treasured grace of chastity. All glory be to God on high, beyond the realms of time and space, who added to the bliss above this virgin's triumph won by grace. Whoever humbles himself, like a little child, will be greater in the kingdom of heaven. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor haughty my eyes. I have not gone after things too great, nor marvels beyond me. Truly I have set my soul in silence and peace, as a child has rest in its mother's arms. Even so, my soul. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Whoever humbles himself, like, like a, a little, little child, child will, will be, be greater in the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of heaven. heaven. With simplicity of heart, I have joyfully offered everything to you, my God. O oh Lord, remember David and all the many hardships he endured, the oath he swore to the Lord, his vow to the strong one of Jacob. I will not enter the house where I live, nor go to the bed where I rest. I will give no sleep to my eyes. To my eyelids I will give no slumber, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the strong one of Jacob. At Ephrathah we heard of the ark. We found it in the plains of Yarim. Let us go to the place of his dwelling. Let us go to kneel at his footstool. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your strength. Your priests shall be clothed with holiness. Your faithful shall ring out their joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. With simplicity of heart, I, I have, have joyfully, joyfully offered everything, everything to you, my God. The Lord has sworn an oath to David, his kingdom will stand forever. The Lord swore an oath to David, he will not go back on his word. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If they keep my covenant in truth, and my laws that I have taught them, their sons also shall rule on your throne from age to age. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place forever. Here have I chosen to live. I will greatly bless her produce. I will fill her poor with bread. 
I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful shall ring out their joy. There David's stock will flower. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. I will cover his enemies with shame, but on him my crown shall shine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. His kingdom will stand forever. Come, consider the works of the Lord. The marvels he has created on this earth. From the letter to the Galatians. Since we live by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's lead. Let us never be boastful or challenging or jealous toward one another. My brothers, if someone is detected in sin, you who live by the Spirit should gently set him right, each of you trying to avoid falling into temptation himself. Help carry one another's burdens. In that way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he amounts to something, when in fact he is nothing, he is only deceiving himself. Each man should look to his conduct. If he has reason to boast of anything, it will be because the achievement is his and not another's. Everyone should bear his own responsibility. The man instructed in the word should share all he has with his instructor. Make no mistake about it. No one makes a fool of God. A man will reap only what he sows. If he sows in the field of the flesh, he will reap a harvest of corruption. But if his seed ground is the spirit, he will reap everlasting life. Let us not grow weary of doing good. If we do not relax our efforts, in due time we shall reap our harvest. While we have the opportunity, let us do good to all men, but especially those of the household of the faith. See. I write to you in my own large handwriting. Those who are trying to force you to be circumcised are making a play for human approval with an eye to escaping persecution for the cross of Christ. The very ones who accept circumcision do not follow the law themselves. They want you to be circumcised only that they may boast about your bodily observance. May I never boast of anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through it, the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It means nothing whether one is circumcised or not. All that matters is that one is created anew. Peace and mercy on all who follow this rule of life and on the Israel of God. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the brand marks of Jesus in my body. Brothers, may the favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. A man can only reap what he has sown. If you sow in the field of selfishness, it will bring you a harvest of death and decay. If you sow in the field of the Spirit, you will reap a harvest of life everlasting. It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. If you sow in the field of the Spirit, you will reap a harvest of life everlasting. From the Books of Dialogues by St. Gregory the Great, Pope. Scholastica, the sister of St. Benedict, had been consecrated to God from her earliest years. She was accustomed to visiting her brother once a year. He would come down to meet her at a place on the monastery property, not far outside the gate. One day she came as usual, and her saintly brother went with some of his disciples. They spent the whole day praising God and talking of sacred things. As night fell, they had supper together. Their spiritual conversation went on, and the hour grew late. The holy nun said to her brother, 
Please, do not leave me tonight. Let us go on until morning, talking about the delights of the spiritual life. Sister, he replied, what are you saying? I simply cannot stay outside my cell. When she heard her brother refuse her request, the holy woman joined her hands on the table, laid her head on them, and began to pray. As she raised her head from the table, there were such brilliant flashes of lightning, such great peals of thunder, and such a heavy downpour of rain that neither Benedict nor his brethren could stir across the threshold of the place where they had been seated. Sadly, he began to complain, May God forgive you, sister. What have you done? Well, she answered, I asked you, and you would not listen. So I asked my God, and he did listen. So now go off, if you can. Leave me, and return to your monastery. Reluctant as he was to stay of his own will, he remained against his will. So it came about that they stayed awake the whole night, engrossed in their conversation about the spiritual life. It is not surprising that she was more effective than he, since, as John says, God is love. It was absolutely right that she could do more, as she loved more. Three days later, Benedict was in his cell, Looking up to the sky, he saw his sister's soul leave her body in the form of a dove and fly up to the secret places of heaven. Rejoicing in her great glory, he thanked Almighty God with hymns and words of praise. He then sent his brethren to bring her body to the monastery and lay it in the tomb he had prepared for himself. Their minds had always been united in God. Their bodies were to share a common grave. When the saintly nun begged the Lord that her brother might not leave her, she received more than her brother did from the Lord of her heart, because she loved him so much. How good! How delightful it is for brothers and sisters to live in unity. She received more than her brother did from the Lord of her heart because she loved him so much. Let us pray. Lord, as we recall the memory of Saint Scholastica, we ask that by her example we may serve you with love and obtain perfect joy. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.